Hey, with that, you please rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call this meeting of Independent School District 544 to order. Uh, clerk, will you establish a form for us, please? I will. Uh, Kirby Anderson. Present. Natalie Knudsen. Absent. Melanie Cole. Here. Matthew Lemke. Here. Missy Hermes. Present. And Stephen Vegas. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda passes. Uh, moving on to reports, we are going to start with Dean Monkey, our <laughs> secondary school principal. <laughs> That's what happens when you show up last. <laughs> it works. <laughs> um, well, I've just got a very quickly just a few items here for you. Um, just a little bit of a change in our schedule is that we uh, extended our quarter through this Friday for the third quarter, um, especially that helps our middle school, um, just in the sense of the number of days that we lost out of that, um, this third quarter after kind of the first of the year. Um, and so um, it balances out to within a day, then comparing the third quarter to the fourth quarter. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and run that through the 29th. And then with that, um, so a week from Thursday, we'll be collecting grades for a uh, progress report for our high school and a uh, quarter grade then for our middle school to go out. Um, and then if you look at the calendar, um, weather permitting, uh, April 19th is the only day off we got between now and the end of the school year. So we are very much looking forward to that and just kind of plowing through uh, these last two months um, because basically it turns into test season for us. Um, we are uh, next Tuesday, um, April 2nd here, um, we kind of kick it off with our ACT test for our juniors. A uh, wonderful opportunity for our juniors to take uh, an ACT test right here in their familiar high school, uh, right down the hallway here, and, uh, and that's just been a great thing that we've been offering to our juniors so they can kind of get that under their belt, and then if they want to try that test again, whether that comes the June or even into the following year, they can do that, uh, but they'd have a good base score then to work off of. And of course from there, it's all grade levels and different subject areas, and basically April is going to hit us with testing season. Um, we do have um, a few job postings that are out there already. Um, with some early retirement and some changes that we, we heard about and some leaves. Um, we do have a couple elementary positions open, a couple special education teachers will be looking for, uh, at least a position if not more in physical education and health, um, and at least a position in music, uh, probably at the elementary level. Um, so it's just great to be able to get those out early and be able to have a chance for uh, um, kind of get in the front of that domino effect. Uh, so we've got an opportunity to, uh, to hire maybe across the Dakotas or even through Minnesota here as we look at maybe just a little bit of experience being attracted to these positions that we have open. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and we're talking to special education candidates this week, um, really trying to get out in front of that. Uh, because it is a um, scarcity area for us that we need to work through. Um, and uh, spring sports are in full swing. It may not look like it with the white stuff <laughs> on the ground, um, but we've got them all uh, practicing somewhere. Uh, and that really takes some great coordination from uh, Derek Abrams, our activities director, through all the spring coaches to kind of make that work and balance that out as they try to get in some good quality work here before uh, the ground dries and, and we see an opportunity to get everybody outside. Um, and finally, um, I had a, had a great noon hour today uh, showing a prospective family from North Dakota, um, our, our school here, uh, in anticipation of maybe coming our way with a new fifth grader and a ninth grader for next year. 
and uh, it's just fun to be able to invite those families in, um, brag a little bit about um, the solid programs that we have to offer here. And um, about 99% of the time, they're very impressed with what we're able to do based upon a school of our size. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, the academic opportunities that we have, especially when we start looking at our high school, and uh, the opportunities for activities not only across the school but across the community uh, as well. Um, so they were very impressed and hopefully we'll get uh, a couple new students for next year. Uh, but I did want to make mention of that because if, uh, if anybody out there in the public is uh, listening to this, uh, I think all of our principals are very open to having those conversations in the spring of the year here. Um, you know, many families have to make a decision as far as when they might move uh, to the public school, that seems to happen anywhere from first grade through ninth grade these days. And there's all kinds of rhyme and reason for that. Um, sometimes it's just a transition to a new building, why not go now? Um, or there's a program they want to take advantage of at fourth and fifth grade. Um, but we're more than willing to have those conversations and so if anybody just give us a call and uh, We'll either talk over the phone or meet in person to offer any of those tours around our school to any prospective students that are out there. Um, so, any other questions for me? I have, you have said that you're recruiting through the Dakotas in Minnesota. How far out does recruiting go? You know, um, it, it's amazing where they hear about us. Um, with Ed Post being offered, you know, as kind of the standard um, place to deposit. Elaine would know more about this than the rest of us, but uh, it really seems to blast the word out there, um, and we get applications from everywhere. Okay. Um, and so, you know, just special education, I think we've got some in-state, some out-of-state that have already indicated an interest. Uh, some experience, some maybe have only student taught. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we got a, a, a orchestra teacher from Utah last year. Right. Uh, you know, somebody from Arizona came and joined us. Um, a lot of times they know about the area, uh, they know about a big, uh, beautiful lakes area, and uh, they find a way to find us. I'm just, I'm asking that because we have students of color that are going to this school, and mm -hmm. this is a, true across the state of Minnesota, looking for someone on staff that right. um, maybe has a similar experience yep. um, to them. Absolutely, and uh, we're, we're always interested in the same thing. And uh, you know, we screen those applications real thoroughly. Uh, and if we've got any opportunity to hire any type of diversity here, we're gonna look closely at that. And uh, you know, at least bring those people in for an interview right. so we got an opportunity to meet them and, and see if they'd be a great fit for us. Fantastic, thank you. Any other questions? Right, thank, thank you. you. We will go with Scott Colbeck, elementary principal, Adams and McKinley. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. So I wanted to tell you about a fun event we had last week at Adams School. On Thursday evening, we had our annual book fair. Um, our PTO used to sponsor our book fairs a couple years ago. Uh, because they started to take on some other events, they had to let go of some of their normal activities. And so book fair was one that they kind of let go. Uh, to the credit of the Adams staff, they wanted to take over and, and run a book fair. And so that's what, uh, that's what we did last Thursday. It was actually supposed to take place the Thursday prior, but the bad weather forced us to re reschedule. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of fun. It was from 3 to 7. Families could come and uh, have pizza and lemonade. Uh, there was plenty of free popcorn to be passed out. Uh, Mr. Evavold, our Title I lead teacher, he spent four hours in a dinosaur costume. <laughs> <laughs> and he stated he was rather warm inside <laughs> that dinosaur costume. It was one of those inflatables that had a, a battery-operated fan attached to it, so he was he was enlarged, and he uh, <laughs> he stood outside for much of the evening, where I think it was a little cooler, <laughs> and welcomed families uh, into Adams School. He actually signed up for a two-hour, uh, like either three to five or five to seven. He signed up for a two-hour time slot.
to wear that costume, but he ended up, I think he ended up having so much fun. He stayed in it for the whole evening. Uh, but we had a lot of, lot of families, a great turnout, um, all kinds of involvement by our staff. There were games to be played, and just very fun, festive atmosphere. Of course, the idea behind it is to get books in the hands of kids, and there were uh, a lot of sales that were made that night. So it was a very good evening, and I'd just like to thank all of our uh, families who attended, and then thank our staff for, for putting that on. You might wonder, how, what are the proceeds used for? And what we do is we take the proceeds and we divvy the, that up by the number of classrooms we have at Adams School, and then each classroom then uh, sees a, some extra funds put into their accounts. Another big event that we had recently was one week ago tonight, and that's kindergarten registration at McKinley School. Uh, that's always a, a, a fun evening. Uh, it seems to um, energize us. It's fun to meet the uh, incoming class. So we met the class of the graduating class of 2032. Uh, we had 149 students attend the night of kindergarten registration. We had 133 of those 149 leave some registration papers with us. Um, but that number of 133, we've seen some more registration papers trickle in, of course, since last week. Um, our parent-teacher organization was there. They were handing out shirts to each of the students. Um, we had uh, a representative from the bus company, Dawn Clark. She was there to introduce herself and talk a little bit about how busing works. Our school nurse, Jen Kohorst, was there to talk about the importance of immunizations and how that's a state law and you have to have those um, up to date before you can start school. Um, Molly Danielson was there, kind of the tracking down parents if they needed to still have their child have their um, early childhood screening. So it was a good evening. Uh, by the time we had the students leave the gymnasium uh, to go to a classroom with a teacher, um, then I had about 30 minutes to talk with the families there, um, myself and Dawn Clark and Jan Kohlhorst. So, uh, you know, with that, with that number, this isn't an exact science, of course, but over the years we've kept some, we've kept some numbers and we, we kind of feel like we meet maybe 65 percent of our incoming kindergarten class at the night of kindergarten registration. So we've done the math and we think we're going to have a pretty healthy class, uh, well over 200. So we have 10 sections of kindergarten this year and we fully anticipate having another 10. Um, so we'll keep a close eye on that uh, as we do every spring and every summer. Then I just wanted to mention last, last Friday um, we had a three hour early out. That wasn't on our school calendar to begin the school year. That was a change due to some of the snow days that we had. So um, we made a little extra effort to make sure that we would communicate with our families to make sure that nobody was caught off guard with that three hour early out. Uh, we didn't want any five, six, seven, eight year olds spending the afternoon with us when we didn't have school. And so we did the normal things. We, we sent home a half a sheet of paper in the school's, school uh, folders letting families know about this three hour early out. Uh, we do that all of, the, all of the time. We ask teachers to communicate it through their normal methods of communication. But one thing that we did that we've, I don't, I don't know if we've ever done this before and we worked with, uh, we worked with Mark on this, uh, but we sent a message through School Messenger and we sent that out on Thursday at 4 p.m. letting everybody who uh, signs up to be a recipient of School Messenger, everybody saw that. It was just another way to communicate with our, with our families. And I was able to check with both school secretaries at Adams and McKinley and uh, checked in with them at about 12.30. And uh, we didn't have any students um, with us in the office or at school yet wondering how we were going to get them home. So it really worked well um, just with, with the various ways that we communicated with our families. Mr. Monkey mentioned that uh, they're going to go in another week here to finish uh, finish up third quarter. Our third quarter in grades 
K through four did finish on Friday. So here we are today. Uh, today was the first day of the fourth quarter. Um, so here we go. We're um, we're we're, we're seventy five percent of the way done this year, and it's just uh, where does the time go? Um, also, Mr. Monkey mentioned a little bit about some openings that we have. You know, specifically uh, in, in my world, at least between McKinley and Adams and grades K through two. Um, probably looking at having not one but two music teachers to find. And so we have those uh, positions posted and we're going to get going with some interviewing here in April. Uh, also have a couple first grade positions to fill. So I'm looking at two new music teachers and two new first grade teachers in the fall. So we're looking forward to that process. And then lastly, and I have a hunch that maybe Mrs. Rund will touch base on this a little bit. But one of the kind of exciting events that's happening here now in the month of April coming up is the second annual Boosterthon in our elementary schools. This is a, um, a PTO sponsored event. We did it last year for the first time. It brought $25,000 into our PTO uh, money well spent this year to help program for our students um, in our elementary schools. And so we're looking forward to uh, another great Boosterthon experience. The culminating event is kids end up running laps and uh, family members and so on can pledge X amount of dollars per lap that their child finishes. And um, it's a great event. We're looking forward to it. Again, we're hoping that we can hold that. The, the culminating event is April 26th. We're hoping for a nice day where we can set up the running course on our uh, football field with our artificial turf. If not, we have a backup plan. Um, it's going to be held actually in the cold gymnasium this year. Last year it was in the uh, community arena, and this year there's an, another event scheduled there. So we worked with the uh, high school administration. They were kind enough to let us use the gold gym in, in case of poor weather and we can't be outside for that. So um, that's what I have for you tonight. And I can entertain any questions. Scott, I, I uh, talking about the early out on Friday, I, I drop my grandson off every Wednesday over at McKinley. And so I get to see a lot of moms and dads dropping their kids off and a lot of get on the bus. So then Friday, I went over and picked them up, which is unusual, but that's the way it worked out. And I saw a lot of grandparents there. So there's there's some communication that you guys handle on the other end too, because the teachers and the kids have to know that they're, oh, there's somebody different picking up today. But it looked really like it really went smooth, and uh, got to visit with lots of the grandparents there that day. It was it was kind of fun. So but yeah, it was handled well. And then um, I did have the opportunity to sit in on the uh, kindergarten roundup last Monday, and um, it was impressive. That was the first time for me. But uh, you guys run a pretty good show over there. And uh, I, I kind of wandered while you were talking. I was walking around, just peeking in on the, on the classrooms and you see the enthusiasm. And we have a couple of twins next door to us at, the, at our house. And they're uh, going to be in kindergarten. And they were there. And so you see a lot of the parents that you know, that you know and, and, that you guys, and kids that you're going to get to know. Just that, just a high level of excitement, and the kids all got to go into the rooms. And it might not be their teacher, and it might not be the room, but at least they kind of got just mm -hmm. a half hour of kindergarten fun. And so it was, it was good to see Scott kind of hold court there and explain to the teachers, this is the way, this is the way it is, and uh, you know, this is when you can drop them off. And, and and I know that because I have a kindergarten grandson, but it's good to get that up front and just say, here's the way it is. You know, quarter to eight and. Don't bring them earlier, and you know, and free breakfast, and you can cover all the bases. You did a nice job. Oh, thank I you. Appreciate that. We're, we're glad as a as a board member that you could join us. Thank you, Kirby. Class of 2032 just doesn't sound no. right, though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it is. Yeah. I, I, Taking the PTO for those little T-shirts. That's my yeah, favorite that's part. Cool. Is uh, yeah. those the, everyone everyone gets uh, one of those 2032 T-shirts. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Little otters. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Tony Rotten, Elementary Principal Cleveland. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Well, um, you've had a lot happening at the, well, across the district really the last couple of, this last month with 
January and February requiring us to do a lot of rescheduling of events and um, kind of some shuffling around. So everybody's done their part and um, things have gone quite smoothly. And we're, we're glad that we can fit in all of these um, previously scheduled events. Um, I kind of wanted to share with the group that we have had um, the privilege at Cleveland of having some local guest artists come in um, February, March, April, and May. And um, this has been made possible through a grant um, through the Cadets um, with the Frank Vadine Charitable Trust. And I really believe it was somebody around this table here that started that conversation, um, either Superintendent Ness or a board member, to my knowledge, um, that approached Clara Beck, the Executive Director at the Cadets, and also Jess Torgerson. Um, and they submitted a grant for $9,000 um, to support uh, supplemental in-school visual arts education and um, it has really been fun and exciting to see the kids work with these local artists so just to highlight um, in February we uh, were able to have Cindy McDougall um, come and work with uh, third and fourth grade students and she um, taught the kids how to do Matisse cutouts that featured the art of Henry Matisse and that project consisted of colored paper shapes and they were able to um, arrange them abstractly and create a unique piece of art. Um, in uh, March, uh, Christy Sweet Cooter came and taught about the Shibori art form, which kids had, it's kind of like tie-dye in a way, but they used um, fabric and um, dyes and then went outside and got snow and put on top of, top of their project. And they just really got to experience the whole, um, whole process. And each of these lessons, um, took place over two days. So they had an initial part of the lesson and then followed the next day. In art, uh, or in April, we have Patricia Roll coming and the kids will be working with um, acrylic abstract landscape painting. And then in May, Michael Weatherly will be teaching the students how to make a mono print using foam core and pencils and printed and printing these on paper. So some really unique and exciting experiences for the, the kids and it's um, they've been very cooperative and learning um, some new um, some new ways of um, creating art and, and very proud of their artwork as well. So we do you know, big thanks to um, Clara Beck and Jess Hergerson and the Cadets for um, coordinating and um, arranging all of the artists and, and supporting them through through this great project. We have greatly benefited. Uh, third quarter concluded at the elementary schools last Friday. Um, so with that, quarterly progress reports will be sent home with students this coming Friday. So we just kind of like to give parents that, you know, check their backpacks and um, look for that quarterly progress report this coming Friday. Um, looking ahead through the next nine weeks, there are many, many important and fun learning opportunities that, that come up. So with that, we really want to stress the importance of attendance. Um, we need those kids at school, and when they aren't at school, they, they miss out. Um, so a lot of these things cannot be replicated, um, whether it's the instruction in the classroom or a special field trip or a guest coming in. Um, it's a one-shot deal, so we, um, we want those kids to come, come to school and, and, of course, stay healthy so they can, can be in school. Uh, but again, on that same note, we really appreciate the communication that we're receiving from parents. Um, regarding the reasons their child might be missing school. Um, as you know, uh, every day at a certain set time, um, if we haven't heard from a family and we're missing that child at, at any grade level, um, an automated phone message goes out to parents reminding them that, hey, or, or notifying them that the school has not seen their child on this day and um, asking for them to call um, and verify that child's attendance. So um, our, that part of our attendance system is working really well, and um, we are able to verify that child's attendance, whether it's for safety or health or, or other reasons. Um, MCA testing is part of Arrives with Spring, and um, at Cleveland, uh, MCA testing will start the second week in April. Um, for third grade students, it is their first experience doing the MCA reading and math tests. So at this point in time, um, teachers are um, introducing students to the MCA testing format through some item samplers that they're working on um, as a class that are projected in classrooms. And then all students will have the opportunity to go into a computer lab, log in, um, and experience what they're going to see on those screens so that the day, when the day of testing comes, they're well prepared and um, kind of approaching that with a little bit more confidence and um, familiarity. 
Um, and with having two computer labs um, at Cleveland right now, all sections will be scheduled into an accommodating um, testing environment, being um, right in the lab. Um, and each, each section of students, each class of students, is scheduled for two consecutive, consecutive days with the reading, um, MCA reading test, and then about a week or two later, um, two consecutive days for the MCA math test. So they're a little bit spread out um, as well to kind of keep them on their toes and give them a little bit of a break. And then lastly, um, I wanted to just mention, April is the month where we practice the severe weather drill across the state. Um, we certainly have those on, that on our schedules at school too. Um, to get out in front of the MCA testing schedule and not interrupt that, um, Cleveland's going to do a severe weather drill on Friday, April 5th, and then the following Friday, April 12th, we will do um, safety drills with the Prairie Science class sections out at Prairie Wellens Learning Center. And that's for fourth, fourth and fifth grade. We do it all at the same time so that they know where in that building um, we would go to find for the shelter. And occasionally, um, a, a parent reaches out to any one of us inquiring, uh, how do you conduct these safety drills, whether it's severe weather or a code yellow or a code red lockdown. Um, and at the elementary level, um, Mr. Kolbeck and I will get on the intercom and um, prompt teachers what to do, that we're in a code yellow um, practice drill. And then we just continue to have some conversation so that students are assured that it's really important that their voices are silent, um, they listen to the directions of their teachers, um, and that we are practicing this so that we're prepared in case there is um, a situation where we need to, to utilize that. So it's very, um, it's meant to be very educational for those elementary kids and um, not to alarm them. Um, but this is the time of year where we're, we're getting in all of our safety drills as well. So, and I guess lastly, just to kind of echo um, what Mr. Kolbeck shared about our Otter PTO, um, they really are an incredible group of people. Um, those, uh, it's open to all parents, um, and they've scheduled meetings um, kind of every other month throughout the school year and are very efficient with their meetings, about an hour long. Um, they've been held at the Cleveland Library. And it's a group that's grown, and we're kind of squeezing into the Cleveland Elementary Library right now um, because there has been such great, good involvement. And they, um, with the funds that they were able to raise last year through the Booster Thon, they are sponsoring, um, they've sponsored Climb Theater, which was an event that um, was held at the beginning of March. And a Climb Theater um, came and presented on self control and had some really um, attention getting lessons for the for the kids regarding self-control. Um, they've been able to sponsor um, the Science Museum as an event that's coming up in May, um, rescheduled from February, but they're sponsoring assemblies for our elementary students and also some residencies where kids will have hands-on hands -on, um, learning activities um, class by class. Um, and then the Booster Thon is coming up here in April and it will kick off on April 16th and then the Otter Dash Fun Run will take place on Friday, April 26th. So we're, um, we're gearing up for that. And the Booster Thon has been, I think, really um, now well received by families. Um, students aren't going door to door to door selling products, but rather they're communicating with their family and friends um, to get some sponsorships. And it was um, exciting, and the Otter Dash is a big celebration and the kids are all involved and all participating it's activity and healthy and they all leave with a, a new cool t-shirt um, in school colors with and there's just a lot of pride that goes into those those t-shirts too in the end so good things are happening at, um, at our elementary level so and with that that's what I have for you. any questions how long? Oh, I'm sorry. You were there? Um, yeah. Does that booster thon go up to fifth grade or does it just stop at Cleveland? It just through fourth grade. Okay. Yep. Kindergarten through fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And each each grade level will, will um, participate in that Otter Dash at the same time. So we okay. have two grade levels scheduled um, to run at one time and then they leave and the next two come. So. I mean, for me, it's more of a, a comment on, I, you know, it was an incredibly successful. Yeah. amount of money they raise and um, I think I think fundraising's changed a bit you know over the years where I used to sell the outer coupon books when I was in you know middle school and I just 
I, I just don't think that's how things are, are, are done in real life anymore where you're knocking on doors and you're you know you're selling things I mean there's a few industries that do that but it's it's using your your personal network to to raise money and I mean from what I remember last year it was it was it was all electronic you just sent out an email link and it just it was easy for people to, to donate and I think that's probably why it was so successful so mm -hmm. um, I mean fundraising just a part of having kids and and mm -hmm. The easier we can make it. I mean, seriously, it is. And yes, it is. I, yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, it's just the way it is. There's just not enough to go around sometimes with school money and whatever. But So it was just more of a comment. I appreciate the way that it's, that it's done. Yeah. Hopefully we see more uh, fundraisers like this in the future. Yeah, so. and Otter PTO has a Facebook page, and um, they'll be sending out information through their Facebook page. So parents will, will start receiving some of those um, that information here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you. <coughs> Superintendent Ness. Yes, uh, today and, and like every time we have a school board meeting, we also have an admin meeting. So we had a, in, uh, on the second uh, meeting, we, we have a larger group. So we include our SRO, uh, school nurse, uh, a bigger group along with our principals. And, and twofold, what we're looking for is we want, we want everybody to get updated current issues, what's happening, go, walking through different things, but also planning for the future. So, so uh, you know, after we uh, did, did our updates, you know, uh, our fall in service, uh, we had talked earlier, we had uh, Dr. Diane Hecox is coming in to talk about, uh, she's, again, literally written the book, uh, making it, making differentiation a habit, and, and so that's all on deck. And, and, uh, and, and then today we also did some testing with our Google Hangouts. Uh, we had a code yellow this morning. Some people got the notice, some didn't. So we, we clarified those types of things. Um, last Friday, I was, I'm uh, part of the Lake Region Community Partners. Uh, all over the uh, region we meet. Uh, it was great, Bud Nordis was uh, be able to come back and was able to give updates uh, from things. And it's interesting how uh, right now education, we're kind of, Walsh really has a good budget for us and he's still pushing the three and two and you just sit there and smile and, but then you got healthcare at the table and you got higher ed at the table and they're all we want some of that money you know and, and uh, so it's interesting how how uh, we're, we're really uh, working hard as lobbying and maintaining what the governor governor Waltz has in his budget for education and we uh, we're just seeing you know uh, well, you, you get a lot of the same emails I'm sure I do, but all the MSBA and MREA and MASA, so a lot of the time spent is, is keeping current on the issues, uh, connecting with legislators, and, and uh, saying what you're favor, in favor of and not. Uh, interesting that um, they have a bill in uh, starting in uh, 2021, school start day would basically go away uh, the after Labor Day start date. You could start whenever you want. So that was, I thought that was interesting. So the calendar um, could really take a twist in, in future years, uh, which it, it would really help, to be honest, uh, to loosen up the calendar a, a little bit. So uh, doing that, uh, you probably won't see this tape tonight, audience, but there is a concert tonight, seven o'clock, the um, high school choir. And then uh, Mark and I were able to sit down with Superintendent Drake uh, last Monday for three hours. It was uh, it was good. I mean, we have, we have a document. I don't know how long it is, uh, but uh, all the different trainings that we're doing and just talking through the district and the, the list keeps growing. And, and then so he was able to come over and then we were able to go to a, a lunch with a businessman. And, and that's sort of going to be when he do when he does come over, uh, we'll connect. But then I'll, I'll try to work with, you know, uh, Dr. Brimhall, president of M State, wants to, to meet with him, and, and a, a lot of people. There's a, that connection. So, so all of our meetings would all be sort of twofold: uh, get indoctrinated into our uh, district, but then also and go out and meet some people too. So, uh, and and uh, we have switched up um, our our next meeting, our principals meeting, with Dr. Joe Hill uh, to from May 6th to May 14th so uh, Jeff Drake can be here and work with our principals at, at that time. So it's uh, the, so the transition is definitely happening uh, and, and going well. He's not afraid to ask questions and, and we're, we just keep going and take a break, stop. Okay, what, what, so it's, it, it went very, very well. So moving forward. Any questions for Superintendent Ness? Moving on to our resolution of acknowledgements. 
I'd like to offer the following resolution of acknowledgments and move for its adoption. Um, thank you to Sammy Ebert and Jason Marquette for their donations to the Otter Angel account, an account created to anonymously assist families unable to pay for student meals. I'll second that. So that's the offer that mm -hmm. resolution. Mm -hmm. Move for a second. Melanie seconded. Second it. And we have a roll call, please. Yes. Um, let's see. Natalie Knutson. Melanie Cole. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Vegasa. Yes. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Moving on to our general consent items, we have the minutes for the March 11, 2019 board meeting. Uh, personnel, Lane Jenkins. Yes, we have a few different movements still yet, even though it's getting closer to the end of the year. We have some shifts. Um, certified staff resignation, Elise Smith, um, which uh, was talked about a little bit earlier about some of our openings with our elementary teaching positions. Um, also, we have a, um, Nancy Dahl, elementary teacher also at Adams, who will be retiring at the end of this year. We'll be hiring um, a long-term paraeducator substitute, six hours a day at McKinley uh, School. Um, effective at the end of this week to, through the end of the school year. And then we also have a support staff resignation, Brenda Bailey, custodian at McKinley. And her last day will be next week. So I would recommend all these for approval. Okay, was somebody uh, uh, offered a motion to approve the general consent items? So do we have a second? Second. Okay, I see. Any discussion? All those in favor of the general consent items say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? General consent items pass. There is no old business. New and under new business, we have a resolution on the retirement of Nancy Dahl, whereas Nancy Dahl began her employment with the Fergus Falls Public Schools in August 2009, and whereas Nancy has been a valued employee with the Fergus Falls Public Schools for the past 10 years, and whereas Nancy has done an excellent job as an elementary teacher for the district. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Fergus Falls School Board to thank Nancy Dahl for her 10 years of dedicated service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Will somebody offer that resolution to move for its adoption? So moved. Do we have a second? A second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Matthew Lemke? Yes. Missy Hermes? Yes. Stephen Vigasa? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. Melanie Cole? Yes. <coughs> Resolution passes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Item number two, we have an addition of a half-time special education paraprofessional, 3.25 hours a day, uh, position for a Head Start program. Um, do we have a motion to approve that? So moved. So do we have a second? I'll second that. Uh, discussion. Uh, Superintendent, do you so want to just position, uh, the IEP uh, requires this position, so they're uh, recommending a hire to the school board. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, that concludes our regular school board meeting. Our next regular school board meeting will be Monday, April 9th at 5.15. Right there. Wait. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Eight. There you go. My bad. My glasses are failing me. Uh, April 8th, 5.15 p.m. right here at the Otter Community Room. Uh, following this meeting, we will have a work session to talk about staffing. Uh, talent development, uh, directory information, and buildings and grounds. Uh, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>